Hey everybody, today we are going to learn how to create a vector logo in 3D using Maya. So to get started, I'm going to go ahead and go to a vector logo website called Brands of the World. This is a pretty cool site because what you can do is you can Google, or I guess it's not Google, or search the brand that you want to look up. So in this case, we're going to do a Subway logo today. And I just searched for Subway. And I went ahead and already had downloaded this one but I downloaded this. Now be very careful, you do not click here. You wanna go all the way to the bottom and use the CAPTCHA and make sure you agree to the terms and service, which basically means it's copyrighted. You're not gonna use this for any other reason because this is a copyrighted material. This is for educational purposes only. Okay, I'm gonna close that down and I have my EPS and I'm gonna go ahead and open that up in Adobe Illustrator. Now once this is in an Illustrator, we have a few steps to do before we can make it 3D. Firstly, we need to explore what our logo actually is. We need to look at some of the curve structure in our logo. So I'm going to go ahead and get my direct selection tool, and I'm going to first remove this white ox. We don't really need that background for what we're creating. So I'm going to hit delete on that, and that will uh, free up some space when we actually get to make this uh, 3D. Secondly, I'm going to use my direct selection tool and kind of just explore the curves to make sure there's no errors or any interesting clusters of curves that we see. Now, so far this looks good. I've done this logo before, so I know there's going to be some issues, but I'll wait to resolve those while we're in Maya. Now, once you've touched your logo up into a way that you feel is steady, well, you're going to have to do one more thing, and that is save it. Now, you can't just import this in as is. We're going to save this as an Illustrator file, and I went ahead and already had a Subway one saved, so I'll save that, replace it. And when this dialog box pops up, you're going to want to save it in a version of Illustrator 8. Uh, anything below 8 usually works, but Illustrator 8 tends to be the most rudimentary legacy file. These are called legacy formats. You can see right here, legacy formats. We're going to save it as an 8 file and hit OK. I'm going to hit OK there. And I'm going to go ahead and close this down. And that gave me this file here. So I'm going to kind of do some housekeeping here. And I'm ready to open up Maya. So being that Maya is a larger program, I'm going to make sure I close down all the necessary elements and go to Maya here and open Maya up. Give that a few seconds to load. And we'll be ready to create our item. All right. So I'm going to open up some window space here for myself. So go to UI elements and I'm going to hide my time slider and my range slider. I don't really need those. And I'm ready to begin. So I'm going to go to create and you'll notice you have an Adobe Illustrator object button when you create. Now I'm going to hit the option box. This is very important. Uh, by hitting the option box, you're going to see yours, this is how yours will look when it opens up, has a lot of different settings. I'm going to play with those later. For now, I'm going to just import my curves because I want to do some housekeeping with those curves first. So I will hit the Create button, navigate to my desktop where my Subway AI file, that legacy Illustrator 8 format is, double click on that, hit F to focus so I can see it, and there it is. Now, yours may come in kind of jagged, so I suggest hitting 3 on your keyboard to kind of smooth out those curves. I'm gonna go ahead and modify center my pivot. And what this is hopefully gonna do is that will start, you know, that will pull your pivot point in the center. That will help down the road. Now, everything looked to come in all right. And we're going to start by opening our channel box and we're gonna create a curve layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight everything. I just, you see a marquee tooled. Go to this blue ball here, right there you can see that one and I'm going to call this Curves, and we'll make it yellow, make it a little easier to see. All right, so now those curves are visible on their layer, and I can turn on and off those, and that's going to help us uh, immensely when we get going. Now, this next process is really just a rinse and repeat. Uh, once you get this down, it's actually relatively easy. We're going to start on one of the, uh, the letters, and then we're going to deal with this background shape in a bit. So let's start with this S here. Uh, making this logo 3D is not too difficult. It's going to be very flat extruded letters. Uh, this is just a kind of a 
preemptive uh, test for you guys to do for maybe picking a more advanced logo. So I'm going to go and I need to change to my surfaces menu. You're normally used to being in polygons. We need to go one menu uh, set down into surfaces. And under surfaces, I'm going to use an option called Bevel Plus. Now, Bevel Plus is a very cool option. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to reset it so it looks like yours. And you can see I have bevel options, which we'll play with, and I have output options. Now, I want mine to be polygons. And for my output options, I do like sampling. That tends to give me the best result. So you can see here I have those samples here. And I'm going to go ahead and hit bevel. Now, I'll hit 5 on my keyboard so you can see this. So far, so good. Now, there's a little too much bevel on this S. We'll play with that in a bit. We're going to make kind of a, a preset to kind of play around with in a bit here. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and run that process through. And I'm going to run it through that one. We're going to skip the B because there's something special we have to do. Run it there. You can see sometimes, skip the A, it, it comes on one side versus the other. You can see the W decided to be uh, a little bit tricky. Easy fix though. Just move it back. Not a hard fix there. Now, anything that has a counter in it, like the B, that's the negative space shape, I want to select the outside curve and hold shift and grab the two middle ones. Then run my bevel plus. There we go. This is coming together rather quickly. And we'll do this one, bevel plus. That one, oh, that looks like it's kind of ugly. We'll have to play with that in a bit. Go down to the T and the M and do the same thing, bevel plus. That one looks really, really gnarly. We'll fix that later. And bevel plus. All right, now that I have my geometry, I'm going to go ahead and firstly save this scene, and we're going to call it logo. Save that out just to be safe. And I have all my geometry here, so I'm going to hide my curves. Now, mind you, I'm going to get to this background area, but these curves are still connected via history, so I don't want to delete my history just yet. What I want to do is just create a new layer with uh, letters on it, and we'll make those blue, and we'll call them letters. There we go save there we go all right bring back up my chart here now we want to kind of play with these slightly so let's turn this off real quick so you guys can see they they kind of are bleeding into each other i don't really want that much bevel or that edge on it so what i'm going to do is go to my attribute editor and i'm going to navigate through until i find the bevel preset and i have a lot of options here so let's zoom into this s so we can see I have an outer curve style, which will change the type of bevel that it is. You can see you can get some really cool, fun options in there. Convex out, concave in, little rounded, rounded top. This one is kind of like a pushed in area. This is going to take a lot of tweaking. So you just kind of have to be patient with all this. We're going to kind of keep it, uh, I think straight out was the one we had. Let's go up. There we go. And I'm going to show you how we can get rid of that and make that a little flatter. So first is our bevel. A bevel is that bend on it. I'm going to start by, in this case, making that zero. I want it to be completely flat. Now, unfortunately, the method using bevel plus will give you end gons. It's not the prettiest of shape. But in our case here, we're not going to do too much more to these than what you see. So... I'm going to go ahead and do that, but I'm going to make a preset to make it easier. So I'm going to save bevel pre preset, but before I do that, actually, I want to go down to sampling. I want to make sure you can see if I move these sample items under the extrusion selection and span, it, it makes it a little more sharp. So now I'm going to go ahead and save my preset. I don't call it sub way. Save preset, go down to subway, hit replace. And this is where it becomes very easy. You guys will find, and we again, we still have some issues here and there we have to go individually, but you'll find this is one of the easier things to do in Maya. And one of the most asked for elements when you work in the industry is logo or user interface creation. Go down here to the subway text, shrink those down. Those guys kind of got out of hand. Those are a little longer than I want, but overall, that looks pretty good. You can see that we have a nice, evenly extruded 
subway logo and I'm going to just nudge this together to keep it uniform. Remember that W was outward. All right, so we have a couple options now, one of which is if I go back to my subway logo, we have a white shader and a yellow shader. I could grab those uh, values. I'm going to go ahead and put those on right now. Uh, let me just put two shaders on. So I'm going to right click, assign new material. We're going to keep this very, very basic right now. And we're going to put in a, uh, a standard Lambert material. We're going to make it white. Maybe bump up the ambient just a little bit to get it extra white. And we're going to grab those. Those were the yellow shaders. Another new material. We'll go to that Lambert once again. And we're going to just grab a standard subway kind of yellow. That looks good. And then our TM, which I didn't really look at, looks to be white as well. So that's our first Lambert or our Lambert 2 in this case. So I'm going to just apply existing materials, Lambert 2. And while I'm in here, it's always a good idea to name your shaders. So white shader, yellow shader. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and save this out because we have a, a big step for the next part. So let's save this scene, thank you. Let's bring back up our curves that we have hidden and let's loft this one. This seems like it would be easy. But in this logo, it tends to be a little issue maker. So I'm going to do that, and you're going to see, uh-oh. Okay, well, that, that preset does not like that at all. All right, so let's grab it one more time. There we go. It did it this time, but it looks like something out of Terminator 2. All right, this basically is telling us no matter what we change, and I'll go into the bevel just to prove it. I'll probably crash Maya while doing it. You'll see... This is not the best kind of feel. And actually, it's fixing it the way I'm doing it, which is really kind of cool. You can see the error is coming with the curve right about in this area. So I have to play with my settings. Now, if my settings were off, let's go back. I'm going to Control Z. I would have to actually highlight the curve itself. Right click, hold down the right mouse button, go to Control Vertex. And my error is coming in this area in here there's there's some dots piled on one another especially right there that's one of the causes and there's another one down here so I'd have to fix that in my case I I found a pretty simple fix by purely just turning off my bevel and that worked rather well too so I have to be very very careful of that but be aware that when you see these things get jacked up so to speak it's not necessarily a bad thing you just have to do a little extra work all right, now that we have that, I'm going to go ahead and add a new material. Let's put one more Lambert on it, and I believe this was our good old green color. And this is more of a forest green on Subway. All right, about there. All right. So we're going to do that. Center our pivot. Move this back. Make sure that we have a good amount of space in there. That looks pretty good. Great. And when you get it where you like it, you have one more step you have to do. So once you've made all your changes, and again, guys, by all your changes, I really mean going to Bevel Plus, understanding you know, your spans and the smoothness and playing around with that on each exact letter form. But once you're done with that, you highlight everything, edit, delete all by type, and this is the no going back point, delete history. This will clear up some space, and I can hide those curves, and now we have a dependent uh, animal here. Now, if I go back and I undo my undo, delete all history, and I went and I grabbed one of these curves, for instance, this main one, check this out. And I grab this point here. It will actually affect the uh, geometry. So when you don't delete your history, mm -hmm it really can have some effects. Sometimes they're worth it. Sometimes it's really something you want to do. But in this case, we want to just kind of wipe this slate here and delete all our history by type. So I'm going to close that up. We have this. This is looking pretty good. Cool. So that's basically how you model a logo. And you would want to add lighting, HDRI, ambient occlusion, and other passes to kind of get this underway. 
But this is a great start. Um, before I let you go, I'm going to model a quick backdrop. I'm going to use a NURBS uh, plane here. We're going to drag this kind of right underneath it. And I'm going to play with my NURBS plane, and I'm going to say, let's do 20 patches here. It's always fun working in a, another mode here. There we go. Control G to group it. Move that down to my center point. That looks good. Grab my control vertices. This is the fun part. We get to do it from the side here. Makes your life a lot easier to utilize your orthographic views. And just start kind of pulling them up. And what we're doing is kind of creating that that backdrop canvas kind of feel. Keep pulling them up one by one. I'm grabbing the control vertices and we'll play around with this more as we go. You'll see what I got here. This one, this whole line here is not being our friend right now. And that one's still a little far out. Let's see what we got. There we go. So now we have a nice smooth backdrop. Now, if you wanted that to be denser, you can always take one of these rows, start pulling them down, maybe two of the rows, and that will give you a more defined backdrop area. So do that. You can see there's a little bit of a line. I'll turn on my render view. Maybe add Maybe the white shader to this, that's a little bright. We'll stick with Lambert right now. And there you go. Again, so occlusion, HDRI, shadows, all of this will make this a really nice 3D logo. And when you're dealing with your, your setup here, you always want to remember, you know, show off your dimension. Hit up here on my keyboard. Kind of play with it, tilt it get it into 3D space where it's readable, and there you have it. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and I will catch you guys next time.